Hey everyone, before we get into another episode of the Falconry Chronicles podcast, I wanted to give everyone another heads up that the podcast is now a part of the Extreme Performance Outdoor Network. If um, you haven't had a chance to listen to any of the other shows on the network yet, I highly recommend it because regardless of whether or not you hunt with dogs or not or incorporate that into your falconry, there's still a lot of good information that can be had from the other shows in the network. They're uh, always working towards trying to further hunters' privileges and rights and, and fight against people that would try and take those away. And there's a lot of that going on right now. And, and there's some really interesting information that are in some of these other podcasts that uh, I think you'd be interested to hear because, like I said, there's any any type of, of hunting, you know, whether it's hunting with hounds or just general hunting or, or falconry, we're all affected by these types of things. So I thought it would be cool to join a network with other like-minded individuals like this and help grow the podcast and uh and grow with these guys and like i said i mean they're they're a good group of guys and uh work hard to continue to do these other things behind the scenes as well along with providing you know good content with their shows so please give uh some of these shows a a listen if you haven't yet and um, like i said if you search extreme with an x performance outdoor network on any of your favorite podcast hosting platforms you can find it there along with the falconry chronicles podcast of course and and you can also add any of those individual shows as well because they each have their own individual feeds as well so anyway i appreciate you all thank you all for your continued support as always and on to this next episode of the falconry chronicles podcast Oh, we're gonna have a good season when these when the leaves fall. But I watched her climb up, and hang, she's hanging off the bottom of a nest, pulling and tearing. It, it finally got up, and it takes off out of the nest. She chased it for a while, uh, and finally, the 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 last thing this this squirrel run across all everything and runs down into a knot hole. And she did one of them like uh, Michael Jordan's man. She he run down in the hole, and she, that bird grabbed it right at the end and was just hanging upside down by by the knot hey what's up everyone welcome back for another episode of the falconry chronicles podcast and this episode takes us back down to texas particularly more of the eastern part of the state where a lot of squirrel hawking happens and Randy Watson, our guest for this episode, is also the falconer who is responsible for bringing me down and getting a lot of episodes recorded from his part of the state, particularly also the one that you heard recently with Gary Brewer and and you know a lot of these other falconers that are into squirrel hawking and, and the other types of falconry that's really prominent more towards that eastern side of Texas. So anyway, special thanks again to Randy for being gracious enough to help make that happen and for sharing his story and, you know, some uh, some more good talk about squirrel hawking. So anyway, without uh, getting any more into that, we're just going to go ahead and turn things over to this episode with Randy Watson. Here we go. I guess uh, I just want to start off by saying Randy, I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you hit me up and and brought me down here and helped me, you know, do this and stuff, and uh, you know, kind of uh, helped arrange this whole thing. And you know, it's um, it's funny sometimes messages slip through the cracks. I know your initial email was like a year ago, (laughs) but uh, I'm glad I reached out to you there, and and you know got a chance to work this out because it's been a fun weekend and uh like i said getting a chance to sit down with with gary for almost two and a half hours yesterday and um and just kind of hang out and meet you all for the first time it's been pretty cool man i do a I do a whole lot of driving uh and that, so i really enjoy y'all's y'all's stuff you put out i have a whole new respect for uh what y'all do like it's it's been uh it's been like shuffling shuffling pigs man it it one after another it's it's just like shuffling pigs you uh one one fall through you find another person to put in its slot and <laughs> and all the way down to I, I wasn't gonna do anything and and we have a fall through so here I am so <laughs> but I appreciate y'all reaching out yeah no it's been like I said man it's been it's been cool and um you know I ideally at some point in time. I will have <laughs> managed to hit 
every state pretty much that that falconry's practiced in and every country and i still have high goals and aspirations um you know i mean i'm i i hope that i get to hit everywhere but you know i i keep my expectations kind of you know tempered <laughs> you yeah know? so you I know can i see that yeah i mean but i mean i'm hope hopeful that we'll be able to arrange somehow uh to get like even more guys you know around. i mean it's not like texas is a small state or anything so well we and the weird thing is most most of the older guys they you know we had discussed it the fact that just even knowing what a podcast is on some of it it's <laughs> like you know Oh, it's a newspaper article? No, no, no. It's it's a podcast. Okay, so like like on the internet, I'm like, what kind of? Yeah, Not, no, there is no video. Like, it's just kind of a kind of a conversation collecting collecting uh, old stories and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of funny since the origination of of these of this form of media, you know, like the 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 term podcast has become this kind of like its own thing and it's you know for like you said the older generation like if you if you know you know if you don't you don't and it's really just hard to explain to people sometimes that aren't that are completely not tech savvy at all you know and and you know i mean basically like i said i i'm just happy that that people are willing to come together and kind of help chronicle and archive, you know, all these different stories and things and, and, um, are willing to share, you know, their, their stories and stuff with the rest of the world, regardless of whether or not you want to call it a, a podcast or conversation or whatever, you know, I hate using the other yeah. I word, you know, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, it's, um, it's been cool. And, um, you know, I mean, as far as this area goes, I know we've kind of talked some and, you know, I didn't realize that you lived so close to this, like, I don't know, I guess you can sort of call it kind of like a lake resort kind of area or whatever. But uh, tell me more about this particular area. Oh, it, well, where I'm where I'm man, we, we kind of hit that uh that piney woods. We're right there on the edge of that piney woods. uh if you go, which you, you kind of come through it, it's like you, you run through fields, plains, everything. All of a sudden, you hit a, a wall of trees, and, and you almost fight the – I think even Gary mentioned you, you almost have to fight the woods back to keep them off of you. Uh, right here on Palestine, Lake Palestine here, we, uh, we've got kind of – it gets deep. We're up on the northern end, which is stumps and – good fishing the other ends the uh jet skis and in resorts uh there's a couple resorts kind of uh pine coves one of them that they've got a big big hunk of land that uh, if i could get into i would uh i'd be flying over there type deal but <laughs> no mostly uh mostly wetland and uh you can, you can find swamps and in forests of any sort around here so a bunch of our places is nothing but but hard hardwoods and river bottoms. Hmm. And I'm assuming that, you know, because it's surrounded by, you know, such a, or this, this land surrounds such a, a big lake and everything. And, you know, you got a big water source there and, and of course the right types of trees and everything. I'm assuming that's why there's so many squirrels around here. Well, yeah. And, it, and kind of being on the Northern end of the lake, if, uh, you know, Maybe we'll go a little later to go hunting. My my stuff's a little little off the lake, but man, we're surrounded by tributaries coming in it. Uh, just from standing on the front porch here, you can what we're doing looking off to the left is is the big Natchez River coming in on one side, and then we've got three or four creeks coming in on the other side. I call them creeks, but you you couldn't wait them. Uh, keep on going around the lake, and it's this whole place ain't nothing but bottom land with a lake at the bottom. So yeah, it's 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 a lot of the low lying lands and lots of hardwoods. Uh, as far as like timber timber work, uh, you you can't cut so far from the up to these waterways. Uh, so you if around here for the most part, if you find a a creek or a river, there's about a hundred foot standoff of hard trees to a certain extent from them that are just huge and mature uh positive side is 
lots to eat, negative side, lots of holes to hide in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I'm assuming that's kind of where the other the other tools come into play for that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've uh, yeah. I have yet to strap on a uh, a set of spikes and climb a tree. If 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 I can't do it barehanded, I ain't doing it. Yeah. Uh. So that's the that's where I'm at. I'm I'm too fat to fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I would say that if it was 160 pounds. So yeah. I mean, I've climbed um I've climbed a tree one time to pull my own Cooper's hawk and. After that experience, the the way I describe it to people is like, I think I could probably do it again if I really wanted to, um, especially if I got a little extra practice in before, but I don't know if I care to ever do it again. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a whole different ball game. I've, I've watched some of them guys that, that cut the trees down here, and I have seen them literally swing from one tree to another, and there's a whole lot of trust in something that's... uh. You're tied off way above you on something that I have seen break multiple times. And I'm like, man, you, you really, it's not for me. I'm a, I'm a plumber by trade. I would, I will go into a 16 foot deep hole and, and eat lunch before I, uh, am, am confident up high. I don't, I don't <laughs> particularly care to climb something that high. Yeah. So, uh, Gary, Gary kind of, me and him were talking one day and he's like, man, it took me a, a long, 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 long time before I realized, man, you, you climb up one, smoke bomb it out. By the time you poke around, birds lost interest and there's another hunt going when you finally get up there. And he said, I finally dawned on me that, man, there's another hunt. Uh, save that one for later. Like mm-hmm. there's, there's one around the bend and it, he said, man, I finally got to an age that I wasn't as hungry to chase them. Uh, there's another one. Sure. So. So I, I finally got in on the. Uh, there's another one. Yeah, it went into a hole. Let's go get another one. Yeah. So I don't know about you, but like, yeah. You know, I mean, have you ever been squirrel hawking like too many other places, or is it mainly just been here in Texas? No, it's yeah. it's, it's here. Uh, man, to be honest, I it, it kind of has to get started in on on how I got into it. Uh, man, we uh. I've got an insurance agent that that works for us, that, you know, for the company that I, I, me and my brother run. Uh, and I had some damage on my roof and had a roofer out that was selling me a new roof, you know, essentially. And he uh, he said, "Man, let, let me get a hold of a guy and send him down to look at the the damage on the roof." And he guy come down and looked at the roof, said, "Man, I can I can fix that for like a hundred thirty bucks, something like that." And uh, I said, okay, yeah, yeah, get get on it, and man, come by, pick the check up, you know. Well, me and my wife had had went out, killed a hog. We're in the process of of processing this hog out, uh, making sausage. When a knock on the door, I done forgot that I told him come by and get a check. <laughs> and uh, so I'm I'm writing the check out. Guy standing in the living room, and uh. My wife just casually mentions, "Well, do you do you hunt?" And he said, "Man, not not traditionally." Uh, he said, I, "I've been a falconer for forty years, and from there, I was like, hey, you know, can you fill the rest of this check out because I've uh, I've got a whole lot of questions." <laughs> so from there, you know, we had you know that traditional uh, falconer to non falconer conversation. You know, only mine lasted about four hours of. Just question, 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 and you you met Gary. He he stood there and <laughs> allowed every question and and emphasized on the end of them. Uh, and I kind of ended with a "Hey, come, you know, later on, you know, if if you need somebody, I, I'd love to go." It was kind of end of the season. He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll get a hold of you." Well, I, I never got a I never heard back, mm-hmm. but from there it, it started going. So you don't have to be a uh, medieval times uh, or work in a zoo. That you mean you get to hunt by yourself? It, it uh, and I was looking for something to do. Uh, we were we, me and my wife were pregnant at the time. Uh, she was pregnant. I was just watching. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, we looked around, and I was I was looking for something. You know, I, I think kids need to be outdoors. Uh, the the world's going to give them enough technology to 
to tell them what to do. You know, there's something about uh, hitting that point that you're just kind of not saturated in, in your thinking. Uh, so I was looking for something to do, and, and he, man, he told me about how you don't have to sit quiet. You don't have to do it at crack of dawn or the crack of evening. And well, from there, you know, we, we struck up. I had, I jokingly say I had to damage my roof next year to talk to him again. <laughs> and finally, finally, uh, by the time, by the time he come through and, uh, he needed somebody to go with him on a bird he was working with, uh, and had just got her on a roll of, of dealing with people. And he had a guy flake out and he called me up and man, I took the advantage. I'd been working about a year on several hoods. I'd made some gloves and I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I'd, I'd worked really hard at it uh, because I, he was the only guy I knew. Well, come to find out, you know, guys, Gary, you know, and I was thinking it never dawned on me at that time, you know, blind hog will find an acre and i guess you best best analogy here in east texas uh yeah luck luck comes yeah. around from blind, time to time every so often a blind squirrel finds a nut yep yep, yep. so yep. man he uh from there we we became really good friends uh I, once he's seen all the the hoods i'd made and everything he he knew i was serious uh and you know that's about two years in i'd done a bunch of studying on on all of the him and the actual hunting squirrels around here. So we started going out and by the end of that year, I, I'd built everything we needed to trap and had all my stuff. And, but as far as really going anywhere, this is nothing else has interested me really. Uh, I hate to be that guy, but <laughs> the, uh, the, the interest of driving two hours to go, go hunt ducks when, I'm a woods guy, man. I, I I like the fact that I don't know what's around the next corner. Uh, we ended up in, uh, me and him went to Napa, Lone Wolf in Napa. And, uh, it, you know, I remember being up in like the third floor of the hotel room and you could just see for six miles. And I was thinking, man, this, this is not home. This is not where I like to be, you know. So uh, I just never had any want to to go yeah really maybe, maybe one day maybe one day but ducks and ducks and flying sparrows ain't it ain't, ain't, ain't interesting me right now yeah well i mean you're you're kind of lucky in that regard that um you know i've i've had this conversation you, you might have heard a couple of them recently that that i've that i've had where it's like you know, when you're a relatively new falconer, you you kind of have these temptations to just kind of try everything and everything uh, but what you're doing and what's easily accessible kind of looks more appealing and this, that, and the other. And I think it's it's actually worked out well for you that what really appeals to you has already been kind of your thing and you really haven't had any kind of inclination or... I don't know for for that matter just desire really at all to do anything but what you're doing it's probably worked out in your in your favor well and, and to find and to find somebody that uh you know gary is very uh, uh whatever whatever uh best tool for the job type guy mm -hmm. uh and that's me to a t i i don't we laugh i've, I've went dove hunting and uh been made fun of for my shotgun uh, it's, it is an old 870 that somehow I found that somebody had already spray painted all up. And I remember going out to one of them, just a guy invited me to hunt and he's telling me all about this automatic shotgun and spent three grand on it. And I just remember out there clearing dove, just, just stacking them. And, uh, he's yelling, has anybody got any oil? I need to oil my gun. I, I, I'm just, I'm like. Man, can I take your limit too? Type deal. It's you know whatever works the best is what I want to do. I don't I don't care for frills. I'm gonna tear it up anyway. Uh, I don't uh, nothing nothing stays nice forever. So <laughs> and it, that includes birds and bodies. So that is true. That is so. true. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know I would encourage you personally though 
to eventually, if you ever get a chance to kind of branch out at all, if you have any time off, definitely like um, try and get out with with some of the different, you know, guys from different areas that are doing, you know, squirrel hawking and stuff, not just, you know, here in Texas, because, man, I know my eyes have been open to some degree just in the short time that I've kind of tried to make that a little bit more of my primary focus. Like, man, I know like the guys personally that I still have an immense amount of respect for are the guys that squirrel hunt like at an East Appalachian, like Eastern Kentucky and stuff. Do do that sometime. Like seriously, it's the hardest hawking I've ever well, done in my entire life. Yeah. If you knew this land, it's, it's pretty, rolling hills and flat man I, I i'd hate to know that i was i could see the bird over across the way and i've been to west virginia and stuff where you're i would hate to hawk in west virginia you you can literally drive on one side of the road see a road over there and it's like no no that's that town takes about 45 minutes we're, we're, we're gonna make the way over there and i'm like man I could throw a football over there if I yeah if I really wanted to yeah you could just throw yourself down the hill and be there quicker <laughs> yeah yeah exactly I, yeah yeah well I mean like you know when I went hawking with those guys man it was like literally we we pull up to a spot and literally every single one of their spots is like seventy degree <laughs> incline you know for like two miles <laughs> seems like freaking a mile or two right and what's funny is like for a bird especially that's not already in like really good condition like if you want to get your bird fit fast go hunt with those guys for like three days and like not only will you have a very increased amount of cardio but your bird's gonna muscle up quick like yeah. hunting in that kind of area man i remember like when i when i was hunting that red tail that i had and i remember like going up a hill and all of a sudden i look back behind me and the bird's like x amount of feet below us already you know and so she's trying to kind of ladder up catch back up and stuff gets level with us again go up the hill some more and the bird's already back down below us again you know and then what's the the, the gut punch is whenever you do get that squirrel kicked up and then it's always going to be below you it's like this the squirrel always going to be down in the valley, like kind of below your whatever. And you see this amazing stoop, right? You know, from the bird sees it goes down. You'll hear a, just this m amazing crash, amazing stoop. And it misses. And you're just like, you come to the realization, your heart just sinks. You're like, I got to like go back down there now, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then climb back up again. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, the, the point is, is like, it's it's cool like you know squirrel it, like certain areas certain types of hunting aren't all the same you know it, it's so it's funny kind of seeing in person and getting a chance to hawk like in person like the differences in what you're doing the core of it's the same but like you know it's not all it's not all the the same logistics you know what i mean yeah i can see that i i, I have plans on on making a few of them meets uh just just to see and and but it Right now, I've got a four-year-old, and and hopefully one on the way. That uh, maybe maybe a few years. I've, I I think we got one. That's I've got one bird that uh that I made last season with that we're I'm running her this, and I'm, I've got plans on knock on wood that uh nothing happens, but I'm gonna run her for a for a couple seasons. Try to get through the diapers. Uh, something that you can run out and run for an hour and you're not chasing for the next three type man my first bird it it was it was a pretty rough go on my my first bird uh we had a uh, around here they call it a, a winter apocalypse or snow apocalypse it, it it was during that big uh big snow and 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 our our uh, most squirrels but our squirrels around here you got some that live in the trees and some that live in a in a nest ball and I really, you know, just, just, we think that, uh, that whatever was living in the nest balls all died, all died out. It was, it happened a couple of years ago or whatever, kind yeah. of up in the Midwest too, man. Like squirrel population was amazing. And then all of a sudden we had well, this, this huge temp drop and freeze and then the numbers sucked. <laughs> well, and that, I, I add that to, uh, man, I ended up with a bird that big old Tearsel, uh, I mean, but this bird, we we kind of had a uh, 
had kind of a feeling that it was not going to be good to get, you know, from the get go. But uh, in the first casting grasshopper leg, you know, type, I'm thinking, man, this, this, this is the one. Gary's like, man, you, this is not going to be good. You may want to, <laughs> like, no, let's, let's run him. You know, might as well get started. Man, I chased that bird. That bird would, uh, I learned a lot from that bird on body language and what a bird's about to do, except for during a hunt. Man, that bird <laughs> would follow me. I could hood that bird, carry it into the deepest, darkest woods. And I literally could, I could throw the bird up. Bird would, would watch me for a little bit. If it figured out that I was not going to uh, tidbit it or anything, you could literally watch the whole demeanor of the bird change. The bird would look in all four directions find the nearest pasture, nearest roadway, and that was the direction we were going. Uh, and it took me forever to figure out that that's what was taking place. I'd chase that. I'm like, man, we're on something. <laughs> and about the time I'd catch up, we'd make another big run. And then all of a sudden, we'd hit the uh, the pasture, and, and you just watch him do this big circle around a pasture. And you know, all he was doing was looking for a place to move as fast as he could, Scan the area, move as fast as he could. Scan the area. It uh, I was uh, it was a it was a learning curve, and you know I learned a lot from him. But man, I'm glad this this bird here is actually doing something. So yeah, and you you, you kind of strike on something that I don't know for for a lot of beginners especially is is very tough. Is just learning the basics of how to read a bird, and um, yeah, I mean in as far, it doesn't really matter kind of what the prey is as far as, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a bunny or a squirrel or whatever. Like once you figure out what a bird does when it keys in on a prey item, you know, there isn't any really looking around. It's a, it's a hard, steady gaze in a certain direction with a little bit of hunching down, you know, and, and once you figure out the subtle differences between that and looking all of the different possible like escape routes. <laughs> you know, well, just, just making make make these moves, you know. We had that on to just just to add to it, you know, that added on to that was the year like every falconer I knew was like, Man, y'all finding any score, you know, mm -hmm. one or two's like, Yeah, I'm I'm getting them, you know, and it's getting them versus what they were doing last year is uh they were pulling one a week, you know, type yep. talking about, oh yeah, I'm chasing one. Uh Man, I, I think the whole year I, I was going out four days a week, uh, and I chased one. Like now, granted, I I was I was bulldozing, uh, making maybe that's it. You you blame it on whatever, but it, the population went way down. Yeah, and uh, it, even even what you've seen on the side of the road and in people's yards were. You know what normally has four four squirrels in a yard would have one eating the acorns. I mean, it was it was bad, but you can tell we can tell right now it's coming back pretty heavy. So this yeah. year is going to be good. Yeah, as long as there's not like a big freeze like that, it seems like the numbers with squirrels are always pretty consistent because their habitat for the most part stays consistent. Yep. You know, and like I mean, you don't you don't see <laughs> big swaths of of like woods being chopped down near as often as you do just you know just plain flat land getting bulldozed and and plowed over for the next subdivision you yeah. know yeah and uh i think there's a lot to be said for that and you know i'm sure you probably feel the same way i mean all these guys that that don't like squirrel hawking and and stuff like that like me and some friends, we always joke. It's just like, man, I hope these guys eventually come to like squirrel hawking and then like, you know, hawking starlings and stuff, because eventually that's all we're probably going to have. <laughs> well, and, you know, it's kind of down to going, if that was all they had to do that, they'd probably have to like it, you know, mm -hmm. like what you're saying. If you have to, that's, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. Kind of at least come to a new appreciation for it anyway. But yeah, I mean, I, unfortunately, I don't know. I think, for a lot of forms of falconry it's going to just only keep getting rougher and more more slim and yeah. that's why i'm glad i like this anyway Here, here's getting kind of bad on that uh, uh i mean how you, you name it however you want to we've got a lot of people moving in uh if you split texas down the middle you know you could probably east east texas this this whole east side of texas is where all the the housing and the you know 
it's not just big swatches of land. But we have a lot of people moving in. Man, the 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 market has been insane. Uh, new new construction going. People mass exodus from other states coming in. Uh, you know, at one point in time, our land was cheap enough that I, I couldn't even pretend to afford a piece of property right now. It's yeah, it's it, they have it's doubled. You know, in price over two or three years. It's like that a lot of places right now. Like the the housing market bubbles just like it just keeps getting I'm just been I've been waiting for it to pop for like ever but I was going to I was going to ask you though I mean this is kind of a nice area and and uh not that I'm ever going to get to retire or anything but I'm always on the lookout for prospective places that I could see myself living and like especially digging squirrel hawking as much as I do like there you like this is pretty I mean it's pretty neat I mean there's just enough for me to not like feel you know, like, uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere, but like at the same time, man, you know. Tyler, Tyler is kind of one of the bigger, bigger hubs between whatever Shreveport, Dallas and Houston. We're kind of almost equal between them. Uh, it is kind of the hub. It's a big hospital town. Uh, Tyler, big hospital town, Kilgore, which is just right outside of it. Big oil, oil town. So there's a lot of, uh, I don't even know how to put it besides saying there's a lot of wealth here mm -hmm. that allowed for a lot of trades, a lot of big land purchases, a lot of, uh, so, but what's happening right now, what I'm discussing is going, man, there's, there's a place where we used to hunt that, uh, man, we can drive by there right now. And it is, it is just hundred acres cleared to the ground, mm -hmm. uh, ready to be, Ready to be subdivided, <laughs> completely uh, terraformed, and it's, <laughs> and it's everywhere. Like it, you know, I see it slowing down uh, this year. I've I've kind of seen just from the industry, I've I've seen it slowing down a little bit, but slow is a relative term, I guess you'd say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. As far as everything else goes, though, I mean, is this something? I mean, I guess the answer is already you know, kind of been, been given as far as, I mean, do you see yourself, you don't really see yourself even remotely trying anything else for I, like ever. <laughs> man, I, I, I doubt it. I, I really enjoy, uh, I really, I enjoy the woods. I, I, I stumbled upon this by doing, I'm a camper. I'm a hunter. I'm a, I enjoy being in the thick piney woods. Uh, I enjoy the, the, the only place I like better than this is Caddo Lake, which is uh, one of the biggest cypress forests in the world, which is essentially swamp, you know, but it, it has a mystique and a mysteriousness to it that you may see Bigfoot right around the corner. <laughs> there is no doubt that there yeah. might be something that, or, or, or a meth lab, you know. I was going to say, we're, we're, we're here a lot of banjos. Yeah, 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 you don't know what you might run into around here. Uh, just, just laughing, I mean. We're we're right there on the edge of alligator territory, so you might come around the corner and see a. It's very rare, but it's not un unheard of to mm -hmm. come around the corner and see something extremely big that you're like, man, <laughs> I should not be here, or come up on a little nest that's chirping, which is you know all the little babies, and you're going, well, mom's somewhere. Mm -hmm. I have got to call the bird down and get out of here. Yeah, like, yeah. So yeah, and we still got a lot of national forest lands around here that. If you really want to just go hunt, man, you can get into some. I, I can load her up. I, I got a big camper on the truck that I can load her up. I can camp in the back of the truck and I can go for three or four days and, and disappear for and just just hunt, you know, do whatever I want to. Mm -hmm. uh, so we still got access to some really neat that not everybody has. Yeah, you know, I feel I feel I feel really, you know, blessed to to have some access to some stuff. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember too. Did you say? Did you say you you have dogs or you've used no, dogs or? Well, that was man. I, I have not used dogs. I, I was looking for a dog this year. Uh, uh, I think Todd Cole is the the guy. He's got he's got some really dark feists that uh, I, I I was in touch with him, but he he didn't have enough. It, I was just in line. Um, I'm still gonna try to hit him up. My my wife gave me one ultimatum, you know, and it was it was 
if it's going to shed, it needs to be dark. Mm-hmm. So that kicked out the fox terriers, rat terriers, the, you know, and, and I got to find, and he, he breeds a uh, kind of a brennel looking, uh, and they're, and they're really, they're from a really heavy hunting breed that you may not have to teach them to hunt, mm-hmm. you know, where it's some of the other ones you have to kind of really work at it. So I, I a dog's a big investment, a big, not investment, but investment of time. And like I said, with it may have been a blessing that with the idea that a baby may be on the way that hopefully it was like, man, bird, baby, train a dog. I said, man, it may be a blessing that it didn't, uh, it didn't come <laughs> to fruition, you know, so. Well, I mean, you could always go the, uh, the black and tan or like the, uh, you know, the, the red, you know, wiener dog route too, man. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about the wiener dog with the short legs around here. I, I don't, I've seen some of the, uh, even the, the Jags get wore out on the amount of running and briar work. So I, I don't know. I, my wife would be happy with a wiener dog. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I, it, you, you'd be surprised. I mean, I can, I'll, I can show you some pictures of what, you know, some of us in the, in the Midwest and everything hunting and, and stuff too. I mean, if you're hunting a decent amount of woods too, though, then I mean, it might, it might be another possible, just something I for you to consider. You, you know, I, I, I haven't looked into them. You know, I, mine's just, it's always been, been faster or Jack Russell's. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up with rat terriers and fox terriers and, and Jack Russell's. So it's, it's always been one of them that I like. I've never, my wife's the only one that considers a winter dog. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, we were laughing the other day. I was calling him a Dotson, mm-hmm. and and she's like, "I think it's a Dachshund." I'm like, "I don't, I said, I don't know, <laughs> Dotson, Dachshund." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was gonna say, I mean, depending on uh, who you ask, it's either Dachshund or Dash Hound or yeah. you know, whatever. I said, you know, Man, so. this, is, this is East Texas, baby. It, it <laughs> just take like, a lot of the I'm accent off my, of it and put my own flavor on it. Yeah, just leave me yeah, alone. Yeah, right on the verge <laughs> of German at that point in time. Yep, yep. Oh, that's funny, man. Well, I mean, so I guess we could we could talk some then about like, you know, just in the in the amount of time that you've been in and all this. I mean, what are some of the the more favorite hunting experiences that you've had as far as man, just some of the few stories and stuff? Man, I one of my favorites is is so I got two of them. I I one of my and it's kind of a learning experience. It's I, I'm very young in it, so I. My stories are probably very bland compared to some, but one of my favorites, uh, my first actual catch that I, I feel makes you a falconer uh, is is a uh, I took I took this bird uh, out and started working her and and she uh, she was sitting about I got I got into this area and, and was working this area pretty hard and I, I knew it had squirrels in it and she got about. Landed on a branch about uh, about eight foot off the ground, and just sat there. And I thought, man, okay, I I'm I'm gonna let her do whatever she's gonna do. Yeah, you know, I, I finally backed up and said, you know, I'm I'm not gonna drag her. I'm not gonna. I'd been been chastised by Gary about dragging the bird. Like, just hey, bird ain't moving. Call the bird. Keep. And I think it a holdover from that first bird was like, if you didn't keep him moving. You were going to, one of us was going to chase the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, she hadn't given me any indication that she was going to do anything. So I I finally let her have her head. And uh, I just kind of milled around, big, big circle around her. And she landed about eight foot up and spent about 20 minutes on this branch. And I'm, I'm just making a walk around and I'm thinking, what is she doing? And I finally, I, I, I step up on this big old stump and I see her just, fall off the tree and go Pink. <laughs> I thought what was that and then she disappeared never never seen her again I'm thinking well I I kind of just leisurely walk over there and I'm thinking what is going on well she has done there's a squirrel army crawling through the briars that she has been watching mm-hmm. this whole time and yeah. literally just fell 10 foot off the ground, 13 foot off the ground, just <laughs> fell on this squirrel. And I'm thinking, well, that was the uh, least dramatic 
catch yeah. that I've uh, ever heard of, but uh, we we refer to those as uh, yeah. I was gonna say we <laughs> we refer to those as the classic flop and drops. Yeah, well, yeah. I, man, I, I thought well, I, it wasn't as exciting, but man, it was exciting. Uh, the second one though, that one of them second ones, she 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 sure made it more of a. We we were down in this big big ravine, and uh, I had I had made it up to the top of the hill and she was about even even with the top of all the tree line and and i stirred a squirrel up that didn't know she was anywhere in the in the nation and it it run up to about the top of that 40 foot tree and was just cooking across the top of them branches and i'd seen her take off and man we she grabbed him off the top of them trees and literally it was picturesque man if i had a camera it would have been pretty because it had one of them roads like you'd see big trees hanging over the roads and everything. And I just remember seeing the bird had enough momentum and had got it by the head and, and had control. So she's just set her wings and she's soaring. And all I see is a little squirrel hang gliding under her. And she just, I just keep seeing her. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, she is never going to stop two, 300 yards off. She finally just like turned off into the woods and it's just a little hang gliding squirrel the whole time. I think, okay, well. <laughs> that was the that was the one that I was looking for. Went over and she had already took care of everything. So it was a it was a good time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's funny, man. Like watching some of these chases and and like yeah, it it it's funny how there's such a dramatic difference between some types of pursuits and you know some endings are almost so like anticlimactic that that you just you kind of almost wish that the bird hadn't have caught it just yeah. so you could have, you know seen a lot more action yeah but in the end i mean yeah it's something in the bag i guess hey but. when i went out I, I, we didn't catch anything i went out uh two days ago and, and i didn't catch anything but man we leaves haven't dropped here yet but man it was uh I, I watched her do some stuff that that I'm like, oh, we're gonna have a good season when these when the leaves fall. But I watched her climb up and hang, she's hanging off the bottom of a nest, pulling and tearing, and, and finally got up and it takes off out of the nest. She chased it for a while, uh, and finally the 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 last thing this this squirrel run across all everything and runs down into a knot hole. And she did one of them like uh, Michael Jordan's man. She he run down in the hole and she, that bird grabbed it right at the end and was just hanging upside down by by the knot it looked like she tried to make a slam dunk and everything mm -hmm. it was over but i was thinking well that was a good chase i don't have to clean up a mess and then we carried on and man she chased some more so i i think we're gonna have a good year so yeah i know one of the most fun things i've seen is uh whenever a bird kind of keys in and is just locked in on you know one of those dead branch holes and you can barely see just the tip of a squirrel dart up and out and then back in and that bird's really just keying in on it and then all of a sudden you see the bird just you know and you know just just swoop down real quick on that branch and then all of a sudden you see a, a hawk foot in a hole and it's like playing tug of war like yeah. on the inside of that with a squirrel and then all of a sudden you see a squirrel fall real quick and almost hit you on the way down. And you know, that those kind of things are, I think the most fun types of, yeah. of pursuits for sure. Yeah. But, the, the, are we going to get this? Like, mm -hmm. is she going to make it? You know, them shoestring catches. Yeah. Love them. Uh, just back to that first bird. I mean, even down to, I hunt a golf course and just, just the craziness of him. I hunt a golf course and I've watched that, uh, that bird, I was standing kind of against the fence on the golf course, and I, I looked over and I seen a little dirt flick out of a molehill. And out of nowhere, I hear the bells take off, and and he he slams this molehill, and then gets in there like a like a Dotson or something. Man, he he's in there digging, digging, trying to dig this mole out of this molehill. I mean, it was. I'm like, man, this bird is is just up for anything. If I could find a squirrel, and when I when I would find the squirrel man, he'd chase anything. Like he'd have been horrible on dogs. I mean, he'd, he'd have, if it looked like he could put it in his mouth, he'd probably try to eat it. He, he <laughs> had no no qualms, man. 
Well, I mean, uh, the only bad side or the only bad thing about that spot that you got, though, I mean, that's it's not the right bird for that. You need no. to you need a goshawk for a golf course. Yeah, dude. no, man. <laughs> yeah, no lie. That that bird was bad. <laughs> but we got it, it's a pretty neat place because it's a uh, it's smashed between a, a big lake and a golf course, and it's about sixty acres shoved in of woods shoved in. And I'm like, man, we they get to do whatever they want to on the golf course, and then come back in. And we're kind of hunting their home turf, so it's it's pretty nice. <laughs> That's funny, man. Well, you have any other things that come to mind as far as uh, experiences that have been kind of noteworthy for you? No, no, not really. Uh, I mean, just just I'm glad that I run into who I did when I did. Uh, you know, Gary Gary's been uh, again luck luck plays a part. God plays a part in it, man. It Gary is Gary is probably. Probably one of my my favorite guys to hang out with. He, uh, we can have some really interesting conversations on on squirrels, uh, on on hunting. Uh, he's he's always got an opinion. I mean, you you don't. <laughs> he's always got an opinion, and and typically, if he's shooting from the hip, the, his opinion's right. Like you know, uh, I have I've had him. How you need to do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, how does, how do you know this? And it's just years of experience. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. uh, but, but Gary, you know, he's, he's, uh, I got lucky, uh, you know, luckier than most to find somebody that I feel like I've, uh, I've advanced further than I need to personally in my hunting due to having such a good coach, you know, so it's that, uh, I've gotten to do some stuff that nobody would get to do, man. We, we, we went ridge trapping for him, a bird up in, in Wisconsin with Mr. Nobles, uh, a noble bells, uh, which was a, just to sit with them and listen to them have conversations. I mean, you're talking combined experience of, you know, 80 to a hundred, you know, it's like both of them been doing it forever. Sure. And just hear stories, man, if you could, uh, You'd have to delete most of them if you recorded it, but <laughs> you know they're great, great guys. Uh, falconry community has been it's it's a different community. Uh, it's not a sport like there they, there are the the one offs, but you know compared to other other communities, you can be involved in. Well, we're a, yeah, we're a good good community that likes to help each other. Like even this podcast, I mean, I. I I put the word out about a week prior to go. I asked, I think four people if they'd be interested in all four said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. You know, if, if that's what needs to be done, there was no like, what's it in it for me or what? It was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. And most of them didn't even know really what I was asking for, you yeah. know? So it, it just, the community's great. So yeah, luck, luck plays a big part in it, you know? I feel you, man. You know, it's, um, I mean, there's the, the fact of the matter is, is there's always black sheep in every kind of community or, you know, sport or w- whatever the case is, but no, you're right. And I've always been very appreciative and humbled by the amount of, of hospitality and, and, um, you know, just, I don't just that there's something about the falconry community that as a whole, the vast majority, they're always so, for the most part, welcoming to things that are going to contribute back and, you know, preserve and kind of, you know, further just the, the heritage of the sport well, and, and well, everything you would, else. You you would know? Ex- in, in such a, uh, lack of better term, elite, uh, the fact that you have jumped through so many hoops to do what you're doing and to do it well, you would expect a lot more arrogance. Uh, now, I ain't saying there's not arrogant people out there. I'm just going, you would expect a lot more arrogance, a lot more, uh, you know, bickering and, and chastising. And I, I rarely, it's it's very much a, uh, I, I hate to put it, but a, like an introvert sport, like where it's like, oh, do what you do, what you do. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I laugh. I enjoy the, the, it's, it can be a lonely sport. You know, everybody sure. wants, everybody wants to go right up until it's time to go. And then it's like, well, it's just me and the bird again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even, you know, 
you you can have friends that are like, yeah, oh, yeah. And that's I, I never faulted Gary for you know not calling me in the first ones. It's like, yeah, everybody wants to go. Everybody wants to know about it. Right up until you know the the work begins. You know, so <laughs> well, that's, I think that may be what what allows that arrogance to really dissipate. The fact that it's just an interesting enough sport, and when we we as falconers get together and are, are able to even just discuss what we're doing, typically it's you don't get to talk to somebody. You, you you're not having the same conversation that you have. Anytime anybody finds out you're a falconer, it's always the exact same conversation. You know, it's the the man. So it brings it back to you. You know, the the mm-hmm. normal the normal stuff. You know, but to have somebody really understands what takes place, it's uh it's exciting. Yeah, I mean, there's not very many of us that do it, and whenever you're around other people that that do do it, and you know, you you have that instant. Um, you know, like the, the camaraderie aspect of it, as far as that goes. And yeah, I mean, there's always going to be, I mean, Falconers by kind of definition for the most part are kind of, um, introverted kind of somewhat, you know, <laughs> well, the problem yeah. solvers, they, they yeah. like to like to work through stuff. Yeah. We, we can be kind of an awkward bunch, but for the most, <laughs> but for the most part, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's not very many, whenever there's not very many people in the world that do the same thing that you do, then yeah, there's that instant, um, I don't know. It doesn't matter what X and X person does, to, you know, for a living or this, that, or the other, you've always got that, that one common denominator that it doesn't matter what the background is. You can always at least have a, some degree of a conversation, but but yeah, man, it's it's been it's been cool, and and I'm I'm like I said, I'm glad that um, you know this has been another you know cool stop on on the on the journey so far, and um, you know before we we kind of wrap this up, I mean go ahead and as you as you know by now uh, since you listen and everything, I I'd, I'd like to get that kind of piece of advice from you or what you think is is important to share for current and future generations, and we can probably. You know, wrap this up, man. Man, I I can only go with the the limited experience I've got and, and what I'm working with right now that I, I have to uh I, the bird is always hunting. Uh and, and be aware of that. That that bird is always on the hunt. Uh it's it's driven by that. Uh and and I am I am still having to work through going that bird is sitting still. I am Further away, that bird has not moved up. And then turning around and going, you almost have to make a decision. Do you call the bird to move up or do you watch and see what happens? And every time, usually it takes me being tired. Uh, we've made a big round. I've I've done this a few times. And then I'm like, hell with it. We're, we're going to see what she does. And I have... I have yet to have her disappoint. She is typically watching the squirrel and trying to figure out she has seen something and, and she is making a decision between hunting me or hunting that animal. And she has yet to disappoint. If I give her her head, she, she, she goes after whatever it is within. And the best thing to do when you, when you get that is to go, what direction is she looking? I'm going to go get out in front of her. I am going to try to push whatever it is around to where she can see it. Uh, and it and it takes you a while to realize that she is always hunting. She's always, what else have they got to do? Uh, they're not thinking about getting home and crocheting. They're not. <laughs> I mean, it, it literally, it's, can I eat that? All right, it's nap time. I mean, there's, there's or can that kill me? And, and once they get that through, it's like, they ain't really scared of much, you know, it, it's got to be bad to be scared. Of, so it's usually, can I eat that? Mm-hmm. And, and is it more important to me than what's over here? He's always going to be there. So that, that'd be the biggest piece of advice I've got as of right now is just, if she stops, investigate what she's stopping for. Sure. Uh, and it's something that his, I'm still working through. I almost have to remind myself daily to, to move. I, I know it's probably a, probably a, uh, almost obvious to to a bunch of people but right now in my in my walk it's 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 what i'm doing so yeah i mean uh, and, and for the most part i think it 
it looks fairly similar from bird to bird, but every bird is a little different and just the slight variation sometimes of those mannerisms. And you learn, I mean, some birds just kind of suck a little bit at, at following and staying right on you. And some are almost too good at it. And then like learning the subtle differences between like what that bird's body language is when it is locked up on something versus not and everything else. Yeah, it can be, I mean, it can be a tough thing to, to figure out from bird to bird sometimes, but yeah. yeah. And that's, that's it. It's just, I've, uh, I've had more, more times that when I don't do something, something takes place. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I'm just taking her for a walk. Well, yeah, and, so. and especially for a brand new falconer, it's it's when you're so nervous about losing a bird for the first time or something like that, you just have to take a step back and, and just remember, like, well, you haven't lost this bird yet. Yeah. And, yeah. like, you know, it, it there's, a, there's a point in time where you're just like, look, unless something really crazy happens, this bird's not going to just fly away, you yeah. know, like, so... If you did you, your you math just, right. Yeah, you just you just have to relax a little bit and and just, you know, let the cards fall as they may when it comes to certain things and and yeah, I mean, you just some well, people just are so just nervous, to, you know. <laughs> what blows my mind is just and again, it, luck, you know, to be involved with, you know, Gary Gary discusses he uh he talks about having a heart attack, you know, about four or five years ago. And the fact that he didn't even run telemetry bells only up and, and it's just to go. There are people out there that are flying. No, but like nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, or like, I think he discussed, uh, flying death and yeah. it's going, man, I got all my senses and telemetry. You know, I, well, I'm not running, I'm running a form of telemetry, but, uh, just, just, <laughs> cool I, I i can find my my again my first bird taught me a lot of things i finally was like it was late late one evening in, in that same golf course i was on the other side of the lake and man just talking to gary i said man i i am gonna let that bird run like if it runs i'll i'll find you know it, i had about 30 minutes to dark and i was like well how far can it go that i can't go find it and man i literally it's an old, it used to be an old park and man, that bird took off across the lake and I stood there on a park bench with my little, uh, it's not telemetry. It's, it's just a tracker like you would with old dogs. You know, it tells you it's that way. And I literally watched that bird for the next 30 minutes go up and down that, that golf course from one end to the other, to the back and forth. And then, man, I, I felt I was driving old beat up truck with an old camper on it at the time and i'm <laughs> i'm running through a uh multi-million dollar like community in my beat up truck with a headlamp on and i'm semi trying to find my bird in their backyards and having to go i finally got lucky and, and instead of being in the backyard it was up by the uh the cart shed like area and I had to leave her overnight, you know, to, to get her down but the next morning. I show up bright and early, you know, before daylight and I scare the heck out of the, uh, golf cart kid. He's got ear, ear pods in <laughs> and I just didn't want him to freak out. So I'm trying to get his attention. And finally I got his attention. He's like, what? You know, I said, well, I'm, I just want you to know I'm not a mass murderer or anything. I'm, I'm literally here to get my bird. Don't, don't shoot. Like I finally pulled him down. So, yeah. Yeah, it's funny the situations you run into, man. It really is. I mean I had I've had situations like that too, you know, just standard beeping, you know, yep. telemetry hanging a receiver out the window and stuff, you know, so and so just like, What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> <Those> I've, <people. laughs> I've debated on getting that uh I've been I've been debating on getting one that but I, I just ain't I ain't done it yet. Yeah. Well so you'll 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 um you, you'll make the plunge eventually. I'm slowly working there. Yeah. I'm slowly working it up to it. So we'll see. <laughs> it's we'll all good, see. man. Well, unless you have anything else you want to add or share, man, we can probably go ahead and wrap this up and, um, you know, kind of on to the next type of thing. No, know? no, that's that's about it, man. I, I really do appreciate y'all coming down. It, it, you know, I enjoy y'all stuff. I enjoy what you do. Uh, you know, keep, keep doing it, man, and God bless. 
Well, I appreciate you, man. And, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep on keeping on. And, and, um, yeah, I mean, my, uh, my goals, as you know, are, are pretty lofty. So I hope we can continue to, to keep, uh, marking, you know, boxes off the bucket list, so to speak. And, um, yeah, man, like I said, thanks again for the support and thanks again for reaching out and, and helping make this happen, man. Yeah. If you're ever back in the neighborhood, you know where to come. Oh, I'd love to make it down to go, to go <laughs> hawking and, and, uh, you know, put a pin drops in all your spots and stuff, you know, yeah. <laughs> hey, don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> Just take me with you. Yeah. Awesome, uh, man. Yeah, talk to you later. All right.